Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Just Another Kill Team podcast, connecting Kill Team communities across the globe. Your hosts today are me, I'm Jason. And I'm Travis, regular co hosts. We connect with all sorts of different people, TOs, uh, competitive players, and just um, anyone else that has something interesting to say that they message us and convince us to talk about on an episode. Yeah, we do like making the world a little bit smaller, one hobbyist at a time. We do have a Discord and a Patreon, which is definitely some stuff that you should check out if you enjoy our content. And if you do enjoy this podcast, make sure to share it with your friends who play Kill Team, because the more the merrier. So we're here with the Ratman, Argentina's one of Argentina's uh, world championship players and uh, on the upswing of the blooded returning back to the meta, right? <laughs> Hello. Thank you for having me, guys. Uh, I'm pretty happy to be here. I'm honored, actually. And um, yeah, blooded are I feel like they are always been on a, on a very special place in the meta, you know? They've yeah. always worked. They're on, on that sort of spot that if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. And so I think that they've been under, they haven't been under the gaze of the of the game developers maybe that much because they, they're just like maybe, I don't know, Admech, for example. That's another kill team I like and know pretty well that it just works. I, I don't think it needs much stuff. So, so a lot of raw stats. Blooded get to play a few more tricks compared to Hunter Clade, though. Yeah, a lot, lot of I, dirty tricks. And I think from talking to some people who have played Blooded, some of their hardest matchups like Commandos, now that Commandos have been knocked down a peg, Blooded have been able to like play a little bit better. Part of why we hit you up was actually we were looking at the weekly stats on our Monday stat show on Patreon, and we're, I saw, I was like, oh, Blooded did pretty well. I looked over, I'm like, oh, Ratman. I remember Ratman. <laughs> Representing. Uh, I'm... I'm I always tell people I'm a one trick pony. Uh, I can I can play one faction good and that's my faction. Uh, I really feel comfortable with it. So you it's did my well it's, the world championship also. Well, thank you. Uh, I did uh, win a couple of games. I, I lost more than I won, but I had a lot of fun. And all the games I lost, I lost them for like a super close difference. Uh, so it was it was super super good experience and i really hope to be there again this year that'll be that'll be wonderful and between like the world championships and now a lot of the upper end of the meta has kind of been like lightly tapped away to make blooded probably function a little bit better just because commandos i think being one of the hardest hardest matchups definitely yeah. hurt and then felgor probably it sucks that they're back at one apl compared to the zero <laughs> felgor I'm pretty scared of them too, because they they are a tough bone to to raw, you know. Uh, they they can do some stuff, but it's I think it's manageable. But the green type was insane. There was no stopping that. It was like chop us, <laughs> just give him all chop us and give him hell, <laughs> and yeah. it just worked. And and I, I'm glad it it worked for so long and. I'm, and people got comfortable with it, and I'm glad it stopped now. <laughs> yeah, we could now, take a break. Uh, yeah, I, and it's like, let's find a new way to, to make this faction great again, you know? <laughs> yeah, so how long have you been playing Blooded? I've been playing Blooded ever since... Well, they came out on Morok, right? Yeah. Yeah. So after I built it in, and I painted it, I'll say about... Uh, four to six months after the release <laughs> according to my working time and my hype i was very hyped with him so i i went commando on it uh, and ever since then and it, it was just like one of those things i like the love of, at first sight you know <laughs> i always tell people i hope you all like your kill team as much as i do mine because i i really feel that I really enjoy pulling the dirty tricks, knowing the time, knowing how and when to save your command points. Because I don't have strat ploys. <laughs> I have one strat ploy, and it's called command reroll, and that's it. And knowing when and where to place those, 
uh, knowing how to manage your losses. It feels a lot like playing Skaven, and that's that's something I uh, I really like. Uh, I don't play. Idea too. I I would love to. I don't have balls. I don't, yeah, I don't there's actually the a guy too. in my local scene that plays Blooded, and it's 100% Skaven conversions. It's uh, they would it's actually amazing. make perfect conversions, I think, it's, especially with the new phenomenal. range on the yeah, the yeah, new range I'm, is coming I'm up. Waiting, so I'm waiting for those new clan rats in order to slay some of uh, of those and and get my Blooded 2.0. But yeah, I would. Uh, that would be my dream. I, I just don't. Don't have the balls yeah, to it's, execute it's it. Super yet. cool. Maybe <laughs> I'll try to get, rally up some pictures from uh, Micah. Is his name? Uh, and his he's got blooded tokens that are like little pieces of cheese. And then he's got yeah. a big green one for the gaze <laughs> of the gods. Fucking <laughs> pretty epic. And I'm sure you know Ratman's a good appreciator of the Skaven. Yeah, and um, that's that's my thing. <laughs> what? Well, how have, how have like the rest of the players in Argentina reacted to? you on blooded like obviously you went to the world championships among i think you and one other player two other players yeah there was one other player uh, yeah so there were a handful there were two of you at the world championships this year hopefully you guys get maybe one or two more i don't know how many more golden tickets your scene is getting but how has everyone else played around your blood and what kind of tricks have worked well for you outside of tack reroll well (laughs) i use a lot well there's this a uh, big old trick we all know it but there's something it's just so much fun to do but it's kind of a gacha which is just gaze your gaze your grenadier yeah. and and drop a di- diabolic in there and it goes boom that's that's just beautiful make sure to put a beast belt on it so he doesn't get affected by the splash but he'll die anyway so you you can just ignore that <laughs> uh i i really enjoy a lot uh, playing with my with my forces that are able to do stuff in conceal, uh, okay. I I put a lot of value on my flenser as a very tactical piece. You know, being able to maybe do a cho- um, a small dash on your scouting, uh, so in order to be able to reach a charge in in turn one. That seems time, and they won't get a shot because you're in conceal. So, and he can put some mean damage. He can punch up his weight lead. Uh, he, yeah, because the flinzer is the one that can charge from conceal as long as he, and then if he stays within light or heavy terrain, he gets lethal five, and he's yeah. got ceaseless normally. Yeah, but here's the trick. This is the the neat part. He's a seven wound mod- model, mm-hmm. so. We all know that he won't survive a, a a fight versus beefy thing, you know. But whenever he dies, he gets to allocate an extra die that he hasn't allocated during combat, and people don't see that coming. And that could hurt a a, a marine. That that could hurt a, a yeah. So you can take your your one small guy that your opponent wasn't thinking about, and you hopefully get either six to ten damage through is the goal. Yeah. I guess. They'll be like, yeah, okay, I'll party this. And uh, and it's like, yeah, but little five, so there's two crits. And okay, and one more crit before I go. And now you're hurt. <laughs> two, two less inches for your movement. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because I just interviewed uh, a tournament in Paris and the second place player got blooded. He also called out, I think, a recon dash on a flenser or some other operative to get an early charge off. So I guess there's some commonality in people playing for these mid-board objective pieces and getting a flenser into a good position. Just because people are worried about the plasma gun with the shield combo, which is like the standard range combo for blooded, and they forget that a flenser can go and doink a mid-board objective if you let them. Yeah, he can he can deal some damage, and he's a very hideable piece, you know. He, he's in conceal, behind heavy terrain, you won't hit it. <laughs> it's... I mean, his world yeah, the, the Flizzer is is really good. He was kind of one of my favorites, like looking through it um, when it comes to the four troopers or like the troopers, the Ogren and the Enforcer. What are your thoughts there? I'm I'm a very straightforward guy. I'm a simple guy, you know, Charlie, Rock, Flag and Eagle. <laughs> yeah, it's Ogren all the way. Uh, 
I call him the small guy, the small boy. He he puts a lot of pressure on the on the table. He he's a, I call him like a a zone neglector. It's like okay, this nine inches throw his whole charge range. I know if you get any anywhere inside that bubble, you'll get fucked, and you and you know it. So you won't be coming unless you're very sure you can you can actually take it. It's something very similar that what happens with the anointed from the legionaries. When he turns, it'll be like, oh fuck no, I won't get near that thing. Or like and, the Wormblade Locust, you get to pr- like produce a bubble where your opponent really doesn't want to interact with you. So mm-hmm. unless they have, you know, or they know it's coming and they send in like a big plasma gun <clears throat> on a suicide yeah. run effectively. Because once yeah, they yeah, hit yeah. the Ogre, they're probably dead at, in response most of the time, right? I mean, you get shot with a Melta, you're probably gone. Yeah. That's that's life. <laughs> but I mean, he's he's great. I really focus. He's the one piece by which bringing my my corpsman is essential mm-hmm. because I I give him feel no pain and for on the first turn I will whenever I need to burn out an activation or whatever I'll activate doctor I complete his his vaccine plan <laughs> and we'll be like okay I give him two shots right now now the boy has his whole flu shots done he's got a ceaseless it, it, it's just a lot it's uh four uh, four dice three ups five six, six rending rending stun it's it's a whole bag of nasty shit Mm-hmm. So, so basically, you're giving him the entire spread of of rules, so he's yeah he can do the most damage possible. So he's got relentless, and he's got a six up field no pain, which takes his sixteen. I think it's sixteen wounds, sixteen wounds, and it plays 16. closer to like eighteen, nineteen wounds. And every mm-hmm. once in a while, we'll play like twenty. It'll feel extremely unfair. Yeah, the, that's <laughs> on me. It would be like seventeen wounds. <laughs> yeah. I'm not good with those field no pain. I'm buying new dice. If I get right. any, what about the uh, what about the enforcer? I know a lot of. I think from what I've heard, most people say you pretty much always have the idea of bringing the ogre in in most matchups, just because it's so much more powerful in terms of reliable damage compared to everyone else on the team. And if you're bringing the ogre in, you always bring the corpseman to make sure that he has at least relentless, if not the six up, feel no pain, is what I've generally heard. Well, but what about the enforcer the or the two dorks? Oh yeah, go, go ahead. I'll take the two dorks over the enforcer uh, 99% of the time because I'm a simple guy. I already told you. Uh, the math is very simple. It's uh, 4 APL versus mm. 2 versus APL. Two. It's 14 wounds versus 8 wounds. Uh, he still he saves some 4 ups, but he's still 8 wounds. I mean, yeah, and it's to, like to if, if, if like the enforcer it. or one of the goons gets shot, they're gonna die anyways. Plus, like that group activation shenanigans is pretty good. Um, like, do you ever like give them? Do you give them grenades or like equipment or anything? I you, I usually take the grenadier because I really enjoy using my my diabolic. But if I'm playing a versus maybe an elite team in which I wouldn't need, I wouldn't need it really, uh, or I would have the. I could just buy the goons a crack, crack frags or whatever, and just go for it. But I, I have a hard time using the uh, the officer. Uh, I I've known a lot of people say that it's very good to give him an extra APL, so then you can charge, you kill something because the 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 Hellboy fist. That's bad news. That's true. That's the big, the big seven, chaos fist does look pretty cool. Seven damage. Yeah, and with yeah. The, the gaze of the gods, he'll just run in and get like an auto crit, which is good synergy. Mm. Yeah, plus if he's gazed, you spend one command point, he'll get one extra APL. So you charge, you fight, you shoot. And if you're retaining a crit, you're definitely killing something and a half, probably. <laughs> Or you could like charge fight and then have somebody else do a charge or a dash or whatever the enforce action just because you're in a better position. So you can yeah. kind of like surprise 
re like move around a couple pieces when your opponent isn't expecting it. Maybe in a matchup like veteran guard or any of the other squishier human size operatives where the where the power fist can one shot something, you can just go up, one shot something, pass an action over to someone else and have them also charge, which could be pretty good. It could be used defensively also. You could get someone to dash to safety, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, the Overwatch shot is tricky because it interacts properly with the blooded tokens. I mean, if you have a blooded token, you're hitting on five ups, but you have one when granted that usually ends up in one hit i covered it <laughs> mm, yeah i mean unless you're using the plasma or the melta where the one hit at least has ap2 i think i watched chris on the west coast chris baki he was just on the podcast last week he used the enforcer with the plasma gun and the shield in a couple games against I think around the around the Eldar teams where two dice is enough to like heavily maim an eight wound operative. So effectively, if you give your plasma gunner the first blooded token on turn one, you take a shot, get an overwatch and you can get a couple extra shots that your opponent isn't expecting. So that's a spot yeah. where the enforcer might be useful. But the ogren would probably also be useful in those matchups. It's just kind of a you look at the map and depending on how the map looks, if you feel like you're going to have more shooting lanes, maybe the enforcer, you can get some value on turn one or turn two. Yeah, I, I feel like you never don't want the Ogren. <laughs> Man, the, well, sometimes the, the commissioner, the commission, ah, the commissar, I'm sorry, could be commissioner garden. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the commissar could be maybe a little situational. Or yeah. it, it needs to, you need to have very oiled up the, the whole synergy for it to work. And I'm done. <laughs> he definitely does have to have a plan before you send him in. Just because on math, having the extra APL just to back up like, oh, I forgot a dude on a point. I got to go score this point. Like having those extra dorks does allow you to have just more room in your game plan to make mistakes. Whereas the enforcer, you got you to gotta have a plan and it better go off. I also think that the the guns are good because uh, you need bodies to give to corn. You know, you need blood for the blood god. You need to generate those blood tokens. So you uh, playing playing a horde. Well, I mean, playing pretty much any kill team. It's a lot about managing your your own um, your, your own death. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but also your I'm look attrition. That's the word I'm looking for. It's making sure that when your guys die, they've done a job. <clears throat> exactly, and I I need to get people killed early on the game, and close up. I need to get the the that third blooded token token on on the second turn, because that's when I get what I call the opera turn. Which I go, you get a blood token, you get a blood token, you get a blood token. Boom. Now someone's gazed. <laughs> Do you have like a fixed three that you're usually gunning for? Well, a plasma is a go to. If I mean, you go for the gunners. And sometimes I like putting blood tokens on unusual spots just to mess with people's heads a little bit because sometimes you don't know what to do with your blood tokens. Sometimes turn three, it's like, I have a fistful of blood tokens now. Uh, but I mean, my gunners, they're a go to. Uh, the grenade, uh, grenadier, of course. Uh, who else? The butcher. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. That's, he, he's a tiny augury. Let me tell you. He's, he's quite good. Uh, yeah. I like to to do, do like a pinch maneuver with those two, uh, come from left and right, which, and people are so concerned with the fucking Ogryn, it's like, oh, the avalanche of muscle, oh, and then Butcher's like, hello, motherfucker. It's like <laughs> an avalanche Johnny. of blades. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, he eats the people that he kills, and getting that heal on an eight wound operative because the team has a couple eight wound operatives, which I think is a thing that also throws people off when they first yeah. play against the blooded because everyone looks like either a seven wound operative or big boy, but you do have a couple eight wound operatives and then you also have 
probably a couple random save types just kind of scattered within. Because if you play the Enforcer, you have a four up save. If you have the Shield guy, he's got a four up yeah. save. Sometimes it, he gets ceaseless. It gets complicated sometimes with the eights and sevens in there. But basically, the Butcher and the Tug and the Enforcer and the Leader, those guys, they are eight, eight wounds. Yeah, it's definitely uh, something that I've struggled with while playing against other blooded players at tournaments. It's like, all right, I got to remember which one has eight wounds and which one has seven. Because the break points do matter depending on what team you're playing. Because you're doing bolters, the seven wound operatives are way easier to just like, oh, I got a crit, he's gone. But with an eight wound guy, you're like, oh man, he's still alive and now I got to manage this dude with a blooded token. Because a yeah, one that... wound... A one wound blooded guy with a knife, if he charges you, he's going to do some damage just because he has a guaranteed hit, which can be really annoying for players that don't finish off their food. Yeah, yeah. And that could be also very, it's very menacing, you know, when you're like remaining in two wounds and you got a guy with a blood talking in there, you know, it, it charges and out of kills you. It's like there's, there's no chance in hell you'll survive that because here it says it hits it's definitely a team that definitely gets a lot more power as the game goes on if you can just keep your operatives alive i know that there's i think we and jason we had just talked about the doom guys and blooded you can technically put all of your equipment points on a handful of people but i don't think that's generally a great idea on blooded so how do you spread out your equipment points on your operatives because blooded have lots of equipment but they're not the most obviously powerful so you gotta like cobble together small bits of equipment to make some of your yeah. lesser operatives more useful so how do you do it how do you approach the problem well there's a, a little piece of equipment i enjoy a lot that's called uh incendiary shells i use it mostly in close quarters for my shotgun because it gives you a lethal five at the cost of minus one damage but it gives you blast Therefore, it gives you blast one, fight. right? Yeah, I think it gives you yeah. blast one. Blast and one. You, it turns Therefore, you into a, a normal shotgun, four dice on, I think, threes, two. three, three, or on twos, two. three, three, to yeah. four dice on twos, two, three, blast one, lethal five on in the dark. So obviously very good there. That one I like a lot. And the thing that I like is that you can switch whenever you want. You can be shooting with the regular profile or you can be shooting with blast profile. Just you can swap it. Just make sure you let your opponent know. And then I'm very scared uh, as a crowd. I am very scared of crowd control, naturally. So <laughs> if my opponent has blast, splash, torrent, or whatever kind of crowd control, I'll get those leather jackets and put those, those boys in beast belts because... You always try to measure two inches in between each guy, but, you know, it happens. <laughs> it happens all the time. I think the but, other uh, thing that you could do is you can also bait your opponent. Like, oh, look, I have two mm -hmm. normal dudes with beast pelts behind cover. Go ahead and frag grenade me, and then I'll go delete the yeah. dude afterwards. Because, like, if you have rerolls defenses in cover with a retain, then you're keeping one on the first guy and then effectively rolling three dice probably not going to die to most normal frag grenades yeah that's right mm -hmm. also another thing i like a lot is um if my opponent doesn't have blast flash or whatever car control source uh i've already mentioned i would like to use the the chest plates uh armor plates armor plate mm -hmm. there you go uh and i just Put him on my key operatives, maybe on my leader, so he can get real close and nasty with his plasma pistol. And guess if your leader has a blood token, he and is he on on root? He gets a free crit. Yeah, distance, basically he has lead with strength. Case. So if he has the blooded yeah. token and he's more than six inches away from your drop zone, basically running at your opponent, he gets the free crit instead of the normal retain one. So you're using the exactly. armor plates to make sure they can take a little bit of an extra hit. I assume you, can you know by the same token, a little bit. 
By the same token, you probably want the armor plates on the Trench Sweeper or the Thug just because they end up being way bit tankier when they're in cover. Because reroll yeah. ones on a four up means that out of your six dice, you know, one of them is a reroll, which gives you a reasonable chance at getting another save. Yep, that's <laughs> that's pretty much how it goes. Then if anyone has stun, I will put my my little Argrin his his little breather so that he doesn't He's have to deal this. with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's absolutely useless nah, poor, poor boy anyone else can take the stun but he he would be like yeah it's effectively like he gets stunned it's like you gave up two other operatives in yeah. the process right yeah. so you have 10 equipment points normally you're taking armor plates and beast pelts basically depending on what kind of guns your opponent has I know a lot of players take wicked blades and sinister trophy those feel like you know generally auto includes do you feel like that's the case or is it always kind of a mix and match depending on the matchup now sinister trophy that's 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 an auto pick that's okay. always on my butcher oh, sometimes okay. i'm i'm feeling crazy and i and i might put it on flancer but it lasts longer on, on my butcher normally if the butcher can heal plus i I like to use the butcher a lot, like to steal points, uh, as well as the sniper. The sniper, I use him as a regular goon who you cannot shoot at, and he can shoot you. <laughs> that that's my mindset for him because he's not that good of a sniper. I mean, he's a three three. He's a very mobile gun. One. That's kind of really. But, his thing. So I just go take the objectives, you know. Do do your soldier stuff. <laughs> yeah, and then like if he happens to get a shot, it's a fun bonus. I think it's important for like a lot of these horde teams to like have that mindset. So I think it's you know it's it's a good sign that that you know you bringing success for the team also showing that mindset. Because um, you like you've you've got a ton of models, but you don't have a lot of plebs. So like somebody has to be the one that just runs around and st and like grabs points. Yeah, I think it's it's key to know that you're gonna lose uh, some some operatives, and it's it's not only gonna happen, but you also need need it because you need to snowball. And oh, what I was saying about the sniper is that the good thing is that if you leave him behind, maybe um, uh, light cover over an objective. He gets shot from a vantage point. He gets to he gets two dices from cover. So yeah, he's got a camel cloak rule that a lot of other teams have access to. So that's using strange. him as a bait piece just because people need to deal with him. But if he's on light cover, then they're on top of a vantage. Hopefully it's a vantage where you can take a return shot back at them. And he's yeah. probably gonna live just because if you're behind cover and you're retaining twice, unless you have higher AP, you generally live through those attacks. Yeah, that also makes him a good tool for like um, I think Beta Dampa, uh, Beta Decima has a lot of good examples where there's like those ground level objectives that are super vulnerable, yeah. and then like super conceal is the best way to take it. But like your sniper with retain two is like a pretty good answer there as well. And if they do shoot at him with plasma, you know they just killed a goon that you can now shoot back. And if they shoot like anything else at him, he's gonna survive. Yeah, pretty much. And he's not a heavy hitter, but on a good roll, he can put some mean damage. I mean, I've seen the I've seen the sharpshooter do his work, especially against seven wound, eight wound teams where the three three damage is appreciable, okay. right? If you do yeah. it once or twice, it's like it's fine. He's yeah, not course. incredible. Three three mortal wounds one actually makes you like pretty significantly more likely to one shot a seven wound model than three four. Yeah, on on. I mean, my biggest nightmare while playing kill team is playing versus people who have more activations or similar amount of activations than I. I mean, if they can stall more than I can, it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> uh, so how, that's how, yeah, I, how, how have you interacted with those teams? You know, Pathfinders, Veteran Guard. How have you interacted with those wider teams? Because Blooded have the tools to interact with these other teams with 12 operatives, but you do need a game plan going in. Yeah, you, you definitely. Sometimes it makes you wish like, mm, I might even not need the Ogryn in here. I just need to out-activate the other guy. Uh, I could use two more goons in here. Uh, 
Uh, thank God for the for the bad guards mine. Uh, the demo mine. Oh God, that that yeah. was one of my heaviest. There, there are no friends. There are no friends of the veteran guard <laughs> mine on this podcast. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we really needed it, but yeah, I'm, glad it's, yeah. I'm glad it's out of here. It was boring. Yeah, it was. I, it was I boring. have trouble. It was unfun. I have trouble with hordes. I have trouble with people who can out activate me, and I have trouble with people that can out melee me. <laughs> That's pretty much my my biggest fears. Because uh, I mean, pathfinders, they are scary as shit, but just charge at them. Managed to get a, a clear charge and charge at two of them at a time, maybe whatever you can do. And I, I really like the shooting to, into close combat a tactical ploy mm-hmm. because people people will be like, "Okay, I will shoot here." It's like, "No, you can because they're yes, I can." <laughs> fun. The fun part about the Pathfinder versus Blood and Matchup is we can both shoot into melee. Yeah, callous disregard. It's like yeah, you shoot into your own melees, and you might hit your own friendlies, and then I shoot into our melees, and I just yeah. blow you up if my guy gets out of the way. That's a crazy game. <laughs> yeah, Pathfinders. I think you do have to like pull the blooded in, but luckily, a lot of the blooded operatives don't one shot you unless they're the specialists who definitely one shot you. But like the yeah. in between yeah. operatives, don't one shot yeah. me. So no, no, my, my like the Ogren, very... the leader, and then the butcher. If if those are gone, it's fine. The thug is kind of annoying because he takes yeah. less damage. But you can take a bunch. But yeah, getting like forcing one player to like into those positions to take a shot first is really important. I think in those wider matchups, you're trying to play the turn one activation game a little bit. Where you're yeah. trying to get scouting to get first to make your opponent go first or for you to go first, depending on how your opponent sets up. So there's a little bit of a mind game there to try to snipe the first activation to break parity. The true rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, I've definitely had games come down to those sorts of super small decisions at high level play, just because if you get a line and you shoot one guy, it breaks the whole matchup open. When yeah. it comes to a bunch <laughs> of dudes with seven wounds, which is what R2, which, which is what Blooded and Pathfinders end up playing like. Uh, I also have a lot of trouble playing against uh, Harkin Savagers, you know, the dwarves. They, they're, they're, they're hard, man. <laughs> They've been doing pretty well as well on the, I think on the weekly stat show. I think they're pretty much on the uptick. I think they're one of their harder matchups was Commandos also. But the Commando nerf to just a scratch means that now all of their shenanigans where they get crits is working yeah. so they're much better against them now and they do have a lot of fun niche strats where you're setting up a layer of barricades that you ignore and your opponent doesn't and they're all heavy so your opponent can't strip yeah. cover so they get to set up in very bizarre positions on their side of the board it's it's weird and the the guy that really uh pulls my neck uh, pull, pulls my leg is the this uh locator Mm-hmm. My locator, yeah, uh, he'll fun. be like, fun. "Yeah, you cannot activate your augurin until two more activations." I'm like, uh, you know, it's that's exactly what I was going to <laughs> on high level play. That I think that that that's a key piece. I don't know. I, I think it's real good. It's like the Phobos. Uh, yeah, it's, the it's delaying great. the activations definitely has come up a lot more, especially on some of the newer teams. Phobos have the Vox Scream. We've had, or Phobos have Omni Scramble. Night Lords have Vox Scream. Hearth can have the Locator's, you know, delay. I think Inquisition agents also have a delay. Yeah, it's like uh, Denunciation or Renounce or whatever. Um, and like Mandrakes also with um, Harrowing Whispers. Is that the name of it? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Your leader can pretend stun people. You stand in there in the middle of your opponent's pile and you're like all right we're gonna gamble until one of your guys gets to go and then he maybe omni scrambles everyone within six have you played against mandrakes with blooded yet i haven't i haven't yet i have played night lords though how's uh, that it, it, a lot of fun actually it was a very tight match uh lost by one point but uh learning uh, i'm i don't usually win against factions i never played against because I, i'm like I just bang my head against the wall until I make a fucking hole in the wall. You know, <laughs> that's my system. 
I like that. That's, you know, I'm, I'm pretty similar. I like to play, I like to keep it simple. Um, like when I play Phobos, I, I only bring in cursors because I'm just like, now I only have one thing to think about. Um, and you know, like when I was playing, uh, Blades of Cain, I was only playing Howling Banshees. Um, but now I actually picked up the Dire, uh, not the Dire Avengers, the Striking Scorpions. So, um, maybe I'll try it again with two, but I still don't have any of the, the Dire Avengers, but yeah, just keeping stuff simple. Um, and just like, just do the thing. Um, it's, it's fun. It's valid. I like that. I, I enjoy a lot. I was going to say that I, I enjoy a lot struggling sometimes against uh, adversity, if you would say so. Like, sometimes your plan would, uh, you, you will lose a key piece for your plan. And it'll be like, okay, now we have to improvise. And I don't like it when it happens a lot on, on the same game. <laughs> but sometimes you get a challenge and it's like, okay, this won't work. <laughs> it turns out I. I miscalculated this part or and being able to improvise. Uh, I think that that's a very strong suit uh, amongst the blood that you can get an extra comms in between in between brackets. You know, that's actually like, that's actually a good point. I think that a lot of players can struggle in the headspace of when something they expect to go right doesn't happen. Like, for example, a space marine goes up with bolter discipline runs up to do double taps it doesn't go through that guy explodes and now suddenly you're down an operative you expected your opponent to be down an operative and you to be you know at parity and you've got to find a way to recover you mentioned that on blooded you have a couple recovery methods you know one of them being the third apl from having gaze of the gods among other ones what other tools have you used in the past to kind of bail yourself out of a situ situation that you found yourself in of your own volition? Oh boy, it's time. Um, there's Dark Favor. That's got to be the number one. Yeah, that's the, uh, the bodyguard play. Yeah, look out, sir. Yeah. <laughs> so who are, whenever one of your operatives has a blooded token, you can just direct the shot to another poor bastard uh, that, that doesn't, doesn't have, have a blood token, token. <laughs> within two inches of, of the original target and that has saved so many key pieces uh, from unexpected shots or maybe sometimes even expected shots but in which i was counting like yeah they will shoot here but they don't know that this shot's going to be over there so it's a very fucky mind trick, you know? It's like, yeah, you kill that guy. <laughs> it reflected. Yeah, one of the fun ways that I've heard people use that is to have the shield guy near one of your early blooded tokens. You're like, all right, you're going to shoot the shield in cover because it redirects it to that person and then yeah. you draw, like, he becomes a valid target so that you oh. get cover from those angles. So you can, like, hide, oh. get cover, and suddenly you're shooting on fours with rerolls ones. Or even to your sniper. You you retain to to cover. That's right. That's right. It's, yeah, because you can have you have a couple guys that are pretty solid at taking shots. It's, yeah, yeah. Some some guys can take it, or even the top. Uh, he reduces one damage. There, there's a lot of people who can take a punch. You just want uh, the key pieces that can take a punch to take a punch, and the other ones not to. <laughs> That's uh, it, it. All it all comes to to what we were saying earlier. It's basically attrition. As you want to control your your groups and your losses. So, somewhat on that note, what like do you typically always take the same tack ops, or do you change that up pretty often between games? There's one tack op I absolutely love, which is bloodbath. Hey. And yep. I find it very hard to pick three tack ops from a single archetype, which is seek and destroy, mm -hmm. and not picking that one is like. This is why I play Blooded. I mean, I'm getting paid to kill these guys, you know? Because we, we have a saying down here that is that the game's called Kill Team, but it should be called Point Team. When I'm you're playing Blooded, yeah. it's actually the same thing. So I like playing Kill Team as Kill Team, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Clean the whole opponent. I mean, if you if you kill off 50% of your opponent, more than 50% of your opponent's kill team, you get a big trick point. If you clear more than three quarters of your opponent's kill team, you get a second blood, uh, blood token. Yeah, big trick point. 
Yeah, make sure so, game plan very focused, right? Because you can only take Seek and Destroy anyways. Blooded is one of those teams that's cursed with a single yeah. attack uh, op type. So you just take whatever makes the most sense for Seek and Destroy and play Bloodbath and just walk at your opponent and score points. You know, it's a curse. But I, I if I would have, for example, any other archetype, I would still be playing <laughs> Seek and Destroy. <laughs> I know it. I just fucking know it. Uh, yeah, the, the rules were clearly written with Seek and Destroy in mind for the team. Like, I so, think it so would make fun. sense for them to have infiltration to give them other things to do. But with how they're designing teams coming up right now, it seems like maybe some of the restrictions are loosening up anyway, since Black Box had three archetypes per per team, which I find somewhat annoying as a Pathfinder play. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. I you think it would be something. it would be nice if I could take Seek and Destroy as a ranged team, you know. Pathfinder Seek and Destroy, just sit in the back and just blow people up, score points. Be great. Yeah. No, I'm, not be I'm not allowed. Very dangerous. <laughs> but yeah, blooded with playing security. Yeah, like go play Bedguard. <laughs> Why would you do that? How have you found your have you played against some of the current teams that have had an upswing in the meta since of all since all the data slate changes? Thinking about higher tech circle being one of the bigger ones. Are there big higher tech players in Argentina that you've gotten a chance to play against? Uh well, I haven't actually. I haven't played there against any hero tech. No, I can't can't think I have. But I'm very scared about the the mine. I don't like things that restrain my movement at all. Once I I was playing a tournament and first turn the when the mine was still huge, mm -hmm. um, they would put mine. It was an yeah, they can get they can get a mine that's a six inch bubble just like sitting on your deployment and then no yeah, one leaves. I, I just concede. I was like, okay. Uh, uh my, my first activation was conceit i was like you want it checkmate <laughs> I, I can do shit because uh, like, this is gonna go on and next turn you're gonna put that shit again in there and yeah let's go with something <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. so yeah i not a big fan of the um, also uh warp coven you know the new yep. thingy in warp coven Warp Don't Coven like got it. a, it's kind of like a side grade though, because they went from a two inch loss of charge and dashing down to one inch, but it basically is up all the time now. Whereas before, yeah. there was generally a little bit of time where if your opponent was making you a get choice, you would get two away activations from it. before. Yeah. yeah. But, but now it's just now on it's all the time. So you just have slower yeah. charges and slower dashes against them, which can be, which can be rough. Feels actually better, like, flavorly. Uh, like thematically feels more accurate but it also like lets the rubric marines have a lease on life because the rubric marines because they move only six inches on an activation it's hard for them to actually get use at a third apl for charge fight shoot which is generally what people are using that third apl for so it kind of evens up the playing field for people who want to use rubrics which from what i can tell is something that people are using a little bit more of because now they've been buffed enough where the rubrics are pretty solid and the Zangors are pretty solid, especially with oh, nine Zangors the can, Zangors. Zangors can fight, dude. <laughs> yeah, I, I learned that, that the you probably way. don't want to play against a bunch of Zangors, right? Like three sorcerers and six Zangors is probably actually not fun for the blooded player. No, it's I, I think it's uh, one uh, of my please don't get this in a tournament kind of kill teams. Yeah, it's like a crazy because, combo of like, uh, so how many Zangers would they get? It would be, um, they, get so they, six. they like nearly, <clears throat> they nearly match your activation count. They outfight you and they slow you down. It's like a perfect cocktail of yep. like big yikes. It, it's, it's a lot to chow. Yeah, it to, almost to seems choke. like scarier than, than Felgor maybe. It, it is. To me it is because Felgor, you know, it's, you're going into a fight, but these guys, they, they do my, those evil 
Jedi mind tricks, you know? <laughs> yeah, the three sorcerers in the background are like firing off blasting shots, firing off indirect grenades, slowing you down, teleporting things. And then the Zangor yeah. is actually in the blooded matchup specifically. Since you come up to the midline so fast, they can also do the Felgor thing of chain activating two Zangors and popping over and grabbing two guys and just deleting them. Yeah. Like, and they might actually have goats with gats, which is also scary. And they break yeah, the yeah. they actually break the charging asymmetry because they can have a horn which gives them all an extra inch of charge. And then your charge is down an inch. So you're like fully two inches. There's a two inch bubble where you have to throw yourself into the line of fire before you can grab someone. Absolutely asymmetrical. The stuff nightmares are made of. Actually sounds kind of hot now that I've now that I've talked mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. No, please no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it, it, it's a lot of fun, though. And I don't know, maybe you can sneak a good plasma shot here and there and maybe kill a marine or two. And the, the tide turns around. It's... Yeah, you do have the activation game to really make sure that they finish their activations and you're getting the best shot possible. Yeah, you, you can outweigh them. That's, that's a good thing. You can still stall. Okay, so another question. <clears throat> have you played on have Blooded on Beta Decima much? I played about five games of Beta Decima. And I'm curious and to I, hear, like, was it super, super rough? Or like, what, or like, is it more hopeful than people are saying in your opinion? Or is it really just doomed for Melee? I don't think it's that bad. It's fun. It gets complicated, all the measuring here and there, the itsy bitsy four inch here, two inch here to go down, and, you know? But I don't think it's as bad as some people say. And uh, I re it really makes me wish I had ropes or something like that. <laughs> I, I always like with the addition of beta decima, some, some kill teams got like ropes or parachutes or yeah like two whatever. equipment point ropes is a global equipment thing just to give you at least a little bit of footing granted they removed yeah. the jump test now jumps are just free moves because they decided to take the coward's way out yeah just uh, flat on the ground you know i feel like there are some kill teams that are very comfortable for example uh harkin uh salvagers Mm -hmm. They have a lot of tools in there. They can skip over shit. And, and you'll be like, I cannot make it to that objective. I, I move five inches and I make it fine. <laughs> yeah, surprisingly, the Hearthkin are pretty good on beta decima just for getting around. Just because you have all the extra rope. So you, at least you're not taking this huge... You actually move a little bit faster onto the platforms compared to your opponents. Because you get three inches from the edge of the platform compared to your opponents. One or like two. And there's this one map I found in which if you stand a 40 mil base right in the middle of two objectives, uh, which is my argument, you're controlling both. <laughs> so I, I played a mission and capture in there and I was trying pretty hard to get my argument up there just to do that, but I need him somewhere else. So he couldn't make it. Bonk, bonk someone yeah. else, huh? Yeah, that's I can't a pretty change. good point for chaos cults because chaos cults can have a couple dudes on capture sitting between objectives. Like if a torment can hold two objectives while the other torments get to the other side, that's actually a fine use of operatives in those situations. Indeed. <laughs> oh, and I guess Hunter Clade would also be another team that could use something like that. Yeah. Where if there are two objectives close enough together, Hunter Clade can sit on both of them. Ross the Elkers. Mm -hmm. Good old forty mils. <laughs> So, you know, we talked about Blooded and we touched a little bit on Argentina, but you want to tell us a little bit more about the Argentinian kill team scene, you know, how big you guys are, where your local shops are, in case anyone from Argentina is listening and is, doesn't know where you guys are at. Well, yeah, of course. Um, I represent a club that's called Warp Games, as in the Warp, <laughs> you know. We'll have a link in the show notes for anyone curious. And we're a small club. Uh, we we started it out with uh, a couple of friends. Uh, we needed a place. The city needs a game club, and so we started out. And it's it's beautiful. It's growing a little bit every day. 
Uh, we're getting new people. They want to play different stuff. Uh, we're getting a bigger kill team community. And we're making one tournament uh, every month. At least one tournament every month. And we consider that like sacred. It's like this month. Uh, this Saturday? Next Saturday? Is it like the made... first Saturday of every month or something? Second. Or does it? Second. It, it, okay, nice. And this one's called May Day, May Day, because we're May. And we're located on Cordoba City, which is not the capital of Argentina. It's actually Buenos Aires. But it's a very big achievement for us to say that we are considered the uh, Argentinian kill team capital by, by the people of Buenos Aires. They, they usually... It's, it's a very nice community growing up. And we love having new players all the time. So if anyone's listening, you can join us. Have you, are there other kill team scenes in other parts of Argentina? You mentioned Buenos of Aires. Course. Yeah. Uh, Have you, is there any uh, cross pollination or Buenos Aires? Are you, do you guys cross pollinate between uh, different cities for tournaments? Uh, yes, yeah, sometimes there's uh, tournaments in between Buenos Aires, uh, Cordoba. There's people who go. We have we have people from. We actually live in the city that's right in the middle of the country. So sometimes this is a very big uh, 40k capital. So people mm. from all the country come here to play 40k once a year for a big tournament, and so it's like a, a meeting point. You know, it's right in the middle <laughs> is that so, big tournament are you planning to try to put kill team in that big tournament this year oh uh, no we're we're making our our own kill team tournaments as well because this is not exactly in our city but it's more like in the hills it's more of mm. a let's rent a cabin and go to the woods and play warhammer which is pretty fun but i'm more of a city right you know <laughs> <laughs> don't have a car <laughs> Uh, okay. so all right. All right. and so we have our small club in here we rented a uh an office space uh downtown and we administer it we have our own fridge we keep it supplied with snacks and drinks we so you guys people... basically have like your own little storefront for for the turn for your clubs yeah sort of we we don't we it just helps pay the rent you know Mm-hmm. So we just sell some some soda, some beers. That sounds really cool. Who else helps you uh, facilitate the club? Because it's probably not just you. You know, there's probably other people helping helping out. No, no, of course. Uh, we have uh, a bunch of of people uh, helping us. Uh, our our tight operation. It's basically it's my friend Gajo, and my friend Nueve. And there's also those are the guys who which opened the club with me uh, like about a year and a half ago now. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It's going to be a year now, about a year ago. So and then we we added some more some more friends. We added our friend uh, Pojo who helped us with graphic design for all the banners and all the flyers and stuff. And we have another another buddy, Mati, who help us with administrative stuff. He's a big nerd. <laughs> and now we have people from the 40k scene joining. They wanna form a part of, of our club. They've been playing 40k for quite a while and they wanna join us. So we have now Tony, which is our 40k representative. <laughs> they they manage we managed to open two days a week. Every week we open on Tuesdays and we open on Saturdays. So people know they can come to the store and the store will be open and we'll be playing. And then other community members suggest like, hey, I want to do 40K on Wednesdays. Okay, there you go. (laughs) So we, we managed to, we're doing some organic growth, let's say. 
It sounds very cool because you were basically building a whole scene kind of from scratch, right? You guys have a spot you're renting. Yeah, we we, over to play. Yeah, we're trying to trying to make it. Uh, We don't have Warhammer stores in here in Argentina. Uh, There's uh, two resellers, but there aren't official Warhammer uh, stores. They are just Mm -hmm. like hobby shops who, who carry some Warhammer products and. So we basically bring our miniatures when we travel or we bring them from Buenos Aires whenever we go there. Mm. Uh, we we three print some some miniatures as well. Uh, we're a proxy friendly community. We, we we don't give a fuck as long as it represents what it's supposed to be. We get uh, represent it and it can't it has to be distinguishable. That's always my rule. Yeah. Like as long as your models all look like they're different and they kind of at least pretend like they have a plasma gun. It's fine. You just can't have three Can what it exactly is? the same. Yeah. <laughs> and then be like, oh, this one's plasma. This one's Melta. And I'm just going to, you know, whatever. It at least needs to be distinguishable. That's always been my rule. And Make base them look sizes. the same so you can swap them. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely that's definitely where like it's not allowed. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's that's our rule. As long as we can identify and respects the proportions and it is what it's supposed to be. Be be happy. <laughs> yeah. And so there's a there's another bunch of clubs in Buenos Aires as well. There are mm-hmm. a lot of nice people. Uh, there's another club here in our city as well. The guys from Kill Team Cordoba. They also like to uh, host tournaments and it's it's very nice. We have like a, a brotherhood uh, in between our clubs. And we're actually pretty close. We're like uh, three blocks away. And but well, we play other stuff. They play uh, strictly kill team. They they don't play anything else. And well, that's that's our local scene. Uh, we want to make it bigger. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully this helps get the message out a little bit. And if anyone is ever in Argentina or in Cordoba, you know, from our from any of the other listeners, you know, you know who to hit up. You can call the Rodman. <laughs> Are there oh, any other yeah. teams that you're looking forward to? I know you've talked a lot about Blood. Obviously, you really enjoy them, but there's a lot of other teams. Are you thinking about picking any other teams up or anything that's exciting coming up? I'm very hyped about the last announced box of the the dwarfs in trench coats and the Jane Steeler cults. I I, I kind of like both. I, I haven't seen a box in a while that I was like, okay, I want those guys and I want those guys as well. <laughs> One of my buddies was like, hey, you want to split them up? Uh, <laughs> You're like, no, I, I want them. <laughs> yeah, I want them all. <laughs> That's it's more for my passion. Arthkin weapons just look absolutely insane. It's like lever, action, revolver, <laughs> shotgun. Yeah, it's like there, there was. They have no right to be so cool. It's like fuck you. Yeah. yeah, my uh, 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 I've got an Imperial Guard team that is, <clears throat> it's Brood Brothers with that like classic Inquisition paint scheme, um, and that's like um, now we have like actual Brood Brothers coming out, and I'm like. I'm pretty excited about those two. Um, the patriarch seems, or the whatever that dude, um, the big old uh, twenty foot tall G. Yeah, the patriarch. Yeah, he's yeah. the patriarch. Um, yeah, totally, totally normal operative that should absolutely be in kill team, just totally like the studies are. It's a. Uh, I, I like if he plays something. If they play something like blooded, which they look like they would, because they're a bunch of guys with one big guy. I might be interested. I like a lot the crew as well. I think that mm-hmm. they are not a very under underplayed kill team, which is very solid. And if it could be very aggressive, very aggressive, is that's a kill team that's played forward instead of always on the on the shadows how it's usually played. It can be very very powerful. Uh, I'm scared of of. Of agro crude. <laughs> yeah, I think crude are one of the interesting teams because their hard matchups are the elite teams and commandos. It's because it's very hard for their profiles to punch through 10 wounds with just a scratch. And power yeah. armor is just like rough for them because you have six attacks on twos, two, three, AP two, but that doesn't really do anything to Marines. Like you go up, you shoot a Marine, 
takes like eight damage and he just kills you. <laughs> yeah, that's it's very hard when you have so many models on the table, it's very hard not to get double charged. And sometimes those those little doggies can can give you a mean bite. <laughs> True. But doggy, no biscuit. He'll just eat you as the biscuit. Yeah, you're the biscuit. <laughs> Yeah, five dice on threes, three, four rending is no joke against blooded or other similarly small teams. Yeah, like anything eight wounds or less is just going to get like uh, monched. And then anything more is just can be maimed. I think that crude are a very underlooked kill team that people should be playing more because they are they are mean motherfuckers. They're ugly. They're mean. <laughs> well, Bratman, I think, uh, you know, we touched on Argentina, Blooded, a lot of the random tactics that Blooded have. Anything else you want to talk to about before we uh, head off for the night? Uh, well, not really. I want to thank, thank you all for having me. I want to say hello to all the communities, everyone who's listening, who knows the Ratman. Uh, the Ratman loves you. <laughs> and I hope to see you all in Atlanta this year. Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a blast. That is the goal. Blast, splash, <laughs> torrent, everything. <laughs> it's gonna turn your and, lethal five up on in the dark. Yeah, boy. And uh, I'm I'm honored you had me. Um, I'm very happy to be considered a representative of the faction. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for coming on, and thank you, listeners, for listening until the end. Stay tuned. Um, if you haven't already like and subscribe and